In this meditation, we're looking at Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. This is taken out of Isaiah 52, verse 11. Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her, be ye clean, that bear the vessels of the Lord. That bear the vessels of the Lord. Let's think about this phrase. Isaiah is referring to the return after the 70 years captivity in Babylon. Come out of her, come out of Babylon. If you remember, Nebuchadnezzar carted off all the gold and the silver parts of the temple that were used in the temple worship when he took Israel captive. This was the destruction of the Temple of Solomon, the like of which had never been seen. The temple that... Uh, the prophet got that terrible revelation that although everybody was worshipping God and praising him, it was hollow. They were a people of unclean lips. They were undone. And sure enough, they got carted off into captivity. Sirius would then give commandment that the temple and the sacred vessels were to be restored. In Ezra chapter 8, we have the record of the return journey of the Jews from Babylon to their own land. They were weary from 70 years of exile, and it was a long trek that they were heading out on, by the way. They had halted by the river to get ready f to cross the desert back to their own country, back to their own Gilead, back to the place that they longed to be after they had been by the rivers of Babylon, dejected not even being able to play or sing the songs of Zion. As they gathered there at the river, Ezra organises for a band of priests and Levites to carry these vessels, these golden vessels, used in the service and the worship of the Lord. On the evening before they set out, Ezra commits these vessels into the hands of these men and says, Ye are holy unto the Lord. The vessels also are holy. Watch ye and keep them until ye weigh them before the chief priests and the Levites in the chambers of the house of the Lord. You can read it in in Ezra 8.28. And I said unto them, Ye are holy unto the Lord. The vessels are holy also, and the silver and the gold are a free will offering unto the Lord God of your fathers. Watch ye and keep them till ye weigh them before the chief of the priests and the Levites and the chief of the fathers of Israel at Jerusalem in the chambers of the house of the Lord. This phrase, the vessels of the Lord, what does it mean to you? Vessels were vessels of service. That is, they were used in the service and the worship of the Lord. I would like you to consider those talents, gifts, callings and enablings that you believe that God has blessed you with for the service.
of the Lord in the ministry, as it were, of the body of Christ. In the last decade, there has been a massive increase in the utilisation of what be, could be called volunteer services, services from the congregation. This has led to a rise in people wanting to know in what particular way God has gifted them to serve him. In the King James Bible, this is covered under the term of helps. Unfortunately, this has given rise to an expectation that there is a difference between a volunteer and a professional. The church is no place for professionals. Actually, Jesus gave a warning that is directed to shepherds, but also covers all other aspects of service about being a professional who, by definition, serves as a profession. He calls such shepherds hirelings because they will desert the flock when the going gets tough. Actually, Paul the Apostle ends up by saying that only Timothy shared his lifestyle and concern when it came to considering the welfare of the flock. This is a very fairly sobering thought. The wonderful idea about amateur volunteer service is that it is offered out of gratitude rather than for any reward. We have nothing unless we received what we did not deserve, and having received, we're called to be faithful. The world of accounting is not a bad place to look for analogy about this. If I was to send my son down the road with some money to buy a small item and he returned with the item and gave me the change, I might thank him for running the errand for me, but I would not thank him for giving me the correct change. Being accountable for the money is expected in his duty and relationship as a son. He is not a thief. The underlying law of liberty is, to whom much is given, much is expected. So, if you have gifts and talents, you receive them as a matter of grace. You're called to be faithful with them and to develop them to the best of your ability in the Lord Jesus Christ. You are called to offer them in loving service as unto the Lord Jesus Christ. You are not your own, your gifts and your talents are not actually yours, and even if they were, you are a debtor, not to live unto yourself and your own profit, but to live as unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Why look for reward? Why look for thanks? Why get disappointed if your service is not recognised by others? Why indeed? Rest in the sure knowledge that the one who called you and gifted you knows you, and it is in him that your reward is. See him. Rest in him. Note that your life is not a waste, that your gifts and talents are not to be wasted like spilt milk. It is the Lord's intention that every joint supply, because he is the master, the very center of his own body. He knows how well the parts all fit and work together. He knows how they do it. He knows why they do it. 
He knows how all the parts fit and work together. There is a wonderful scripture that I often think about, and that is 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. It follows from this that if you are going to do well, that you will be tempted to become weary of doing well. This is why we're exhorted not to become weary in well-doing. You will not find your greatest fulfillment in living for yourself or in trying to achieve your greatest goals in life. That is, if your goals are fashioned under the capitalist idea of the best way to benefit the group is for each individual in the group to achieve their own greatest potential, I've always wondered about the, the truthfulness and the purpose of this. It drives our economy and our way of life and our capitalism, but really, it's not entirely a scriptural concept. The actual truth of the scriptures is quite different. The greatest way to achieve your greatest potential is to seek the greatest potential of the group. We have been brought with a price, and we simply do not live unto ourselves. We are in the zone of freely having received, we freely give. This is why the following scripture is such a mystery to many. Acts chapter 20 verse 35. I have showed you all things how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of our of the Lord Jesus how he said it is more blessed to give than receive so as you think about bearing the vessels being clean and being involved in the service of the Lord, consider these thoughts. Hallelujah. You're a happy amateur. You are offering for free what has been freely given to you. And cheers for now, Dan. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Amen.